Makers have pressured ERCOT to be prepared in the aftermath of a winter storm disaster. Lawmakers pressed this group's leaders back in 2011 after snow and ice crippled millions of people across our state. Tonight, KPRC2 investigator Robert Arnold has a look at why 10 years after that storm, Texans were once again forced to sit through a widespread power failure. I'm under a lot of stress. I try not to be. Um, I do a lot of praying because my faith is strong. If you ask Donna Bossett. When I opened the door, this pipe up here was pouring down. She'll tell you her family's suffering is the result of 10 years of missed opportunities and lax oversight. How long were you without power? We were out power, power for about two and a half days. Cold was just the beginning. Water was pouring <laughs> all over everything. Multiple pipes burst in Bossett's house. There's a humongous bubble. And all of a sudden, water started pouring down. Sadly, cases like Boss Sets happened across Texas because millions saw their electricity cut as our power grid faltered to the brink of collapse. There's really no excuse, in my humble opinion, that a facility should go off when you know it's gonna freeze a week out. Sound familiar? That's because 10 years ago, lawmakers were lamenting how another winter storm knocked out power to millions of Texans. So what did lawmakers do over the last 10 years to make sure the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, ERCOT, was ready for another winter storm? KPRC2 investigates reviewed 96 bills filed since 2011 relating to ERCOT. Only 35% dealt with the reliability of the grid in some fashion, and only three of those actually became law. In 2019, two bills created a council to share security practices and monitor for cyber attacks. And a bill passed in 2011 required power plants to file emergency operation plans with the Public Utility Commission. I think we're in a worse shape than we were 10 years ago. That's state controller Glenn Hagar. He was state senator Hagar when he passed that 2011 bill. Do you think your bill accomplished what you had hoped it would? Well, I think the event spoke for itself. When you have that many people without power and for days on end, no, we didn't accomplish what we need to. We know now weatherization plans aren't mandatory, but we discovered even basic state oversight of these plans was lax. The PUC said it delegated this job to ERCOT, and ERCOT only spot checks about 11% of plants each year. Even then, there's no consequence. The agency states, ERCOT takes no opinion on whether the measures taken by any particular generator are sufficient to prevent any outage of the unit during certain extreme extreme weather conditions. We found out they were complacent, and complacency will ruin you every time. Mayor Sylvester Turner tried to address this problem when he was a state representative by filing a bill to ensure Texas had enough reserve power to prevent blackouts. That went nowhere. Hopefully this time, it just won't be a lot of talk and no action. The legislature has been missing in action. They had plenty of recommendations and hearings. University of Houston energy economics lecturer Ed Hers says lawmakers mistakenly believed the company's need for profit was enough incentive to make sure operations were tip top. The fact is that <laughs> they charged us $9,000 a megawatt hour for a heck of a lot less service than they usually provide. Yeah, that's the sign of a busted market. Donna Bossett would agree. But they failed us miserably. I think about the people who've lost their lives because of it. They failed them. Now, more than 60 new bills have been filed this legislative session, and nearly half involve making sure plants are prepared for extreme weather, our grid has enough reserves to prevent blackouts, and making sure prices don't spike during a crisis. You can read all the bills filed so far this session on click2houston.com. Robert Arnold, KPRC2 Investigates.